All right, so you've been asking for this video, what kind of tools you need to be an ATM technician? So first off, my name is Nigel Dix, 23 year veteran in the ATM business. And I shot this video for all of you that want to get in the ATM business, well, you have to be a tech first. You've got to know how to fix your own machines. You've got to know what tools you need. So I put this video together for you so that you can get an idea of what it is you need. It's pretty basic. And so I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and share it if you can. My numbers here at the beginning of the video and at the end, if you have any questions, please give me a call anytime you want. If you see a machine out of service, just ask me what the problem is. I'll tell you. Maybe you can make some money out there. All right, guys, enjoy the video. Talk to you soon. All right, so let's get started and let's talk about um, what we want as far as tools to be on the job. Now, first off, you don't need as much as I've got here. This is just me. Um, you're going to need some basics. First off, you want to start off with a good toolbox. A good toolbox or a bag, whatever you want to put your tools in. Now, also, make sure you write your name on it, your company name, and your name and phone number on the box. You never know when you're going to leave your, uh, leave your toolbox behind. So you don't want to do that. I've done it several times, and a few times I've actually got it back. First off, make sure you've got a good um, surge protector. Uh, maybe you want to put it on a new machine for somebody. Maybe you want to use it for an extension cord. Uh, very often you won't be able to get close to the power because it's perhaps hidden behind the machine you're trying to fix. Or maybe there's not enough power to install the machine, so you'll need this anyway. So get yourself a good surge strip. Make sure it's got a light on it that shows you when it's on and off. And put this in every bottom of every machine as well. Again here, a good extension cord. Again, you may not have power right this minute when you're installing a machine or fixing the machine. So get yourself a good, at least 25 foot extension cord. That's pretty much a must have. All right, so here you'll see I have WD-40. Occasionally you'll need to put this in older machines if they've got a lock problem or if you're fixing something. You know, it can come in quite handy. Just keep it around. The uh, dust off. This can be very good for light dusting on your cash dispensers inside the bottom of the machine. It can be good for the printer if you've got a pin, uh, little bit of paper jammed in there. It doesn't do the heavier dust though. If it's heavy uh, Klingon dust, been there a long time, this is not going to work. You'll need a duster for that. Very, very important. A lot of these places you're going to go to are going to be dark. It may be in a bar. Make sure you've got a good flashlight at all times. You never know when you're going to need this. Maybe you get into the bottom of the machine or maybe you open in the machine on the combination you can't see in there because it's dark. Always carry a flashlight with you. Next, you want to always carry a spare roll of paper. Make sure you carry multiple sizes. This is just a small backup roll I keep. The normal rolls are about three times this size. And so this is very, very important. You never know when you're going to go to a location. Or maybe you walk into a location for somebody else and they're low on paper. You can sell them a roll of paper or use it for his bargaining chip. Always carry a spare set of keys hidden away in your car. I can't tell you the number of times I've actually been to a location and I've forgotten my keys or I lent it to someone. So I keep two sets of spare keys somewhere in the car and then my regular set as well. So I have forgotten my keys way too many times. Also, occasionally a customer might say, hey, you know, do you have a spare key? Yeah, I can sell you a key. And by the way, these are generic. So they're not specific to each machine. I always carry one for the uh, Hyosung, the outer, the top and the bottom. A cash box key for inside, the, for the cash box itself. Uh, uh, this is a Gen Mega cash box key. A Gen Mega outer key. And occasionally I'll carry a Triton key, but I don't have one on here. A Triton key, you know, I don't see very many of those in my area. But if you come across an old Triton ATM, or maybe they need it fixing, you're going to want to be able to open their machine. Okay, so next, let's talk about, um, just real quick, we're going through the, the odds and ends. If possible, you always want to carry a spare phone router. This one here is one of my old ones I'm returning. It's out of date now, this one. Very often you'll walk into a location and it's got a phone problem. Maybe the router died. Maybe their router died, their internet connection. And you need this to test on the machine to see if it is the machine or just their phone. Now, this is a monthly cost on this. So don't go buy one specially. But uh, it does come in handy if you have that, uh, if you have that um, available choice. 
Okay, zip ties. You know, I'm just going through the miscellaneous first. This is just some zip ties of various sizes. You never know when you want to clean up some wiring for a customer. Something very important, a marker pen. A marker pen, I use this whenever I service a strange ATM. If possible, I'm going to write my number inside of their ATM. And I'm just going to put ATM service and my phone number. You wouldn't believe how many times the police have called me and said, hey, we found your phone number or my business card inside of a machine I don't own. Once the serial number on the inside is taken or gone, there is no track in that machine. So I will usually write my number inside the vault and inside the top out of the way. Ideally as well, I will put my business card inside the ATM. Talking of business cards, these here are business card holders. This one I've adapted to go on the card, on the car window. So it hooks in the window, I can close the window and they can open it up and take a business card. I can also put these on the ATM itself. I can stick them to the ATM on the side and just put my business cards in it. As you see here, it just says business cards here, take one. Very, very good. You, they can get them to match the color, of, the color of your car. And this is through a company called Card Caddy. I think it's cardcaddy.com. They're very cheap, but a very, very good to have. So I would get one of those if, you, if possible. Maybe you have a card that says ATM service or ATM placement or whatever it is. Let them take your number. Let them call you. Maybe you do events, whatever. So that's very good. All right, next, always carry a battery. This is a nine volt battery which goes inside the lock. And I'm gonna show you in a moment. In fact, I'll put the clip in right now. Okay, so inside this lock here, inside the Hyosung, either the 1800 and the uh, Halo, the 2700 and so on, the nine volt battery is inside of here. The question is, how do you take it off? You're gonna take your hand right here and you're gonna tap it very gently push it up and it will come off and you can see the battery is inside when you put it back on make sure you fold this wiring in and it just goes on these two pins right here you'll know it's the battery if it doesn't beep when you push the buttons and then just put it back on and push it back down okay. when you go on a job and they can't open their vault it might be as simple as a dead battery and so you definitely need to make sure you've got one of these available. Maybe even keep two in the car. You won't need them very often, but it might pay you a pretty good service call just to have a battery and go change it for them. Okay, also, I always keep a little bag of miscellaneous screws, different sizes. You never know when you're going to lose a screw or just need one. So it's always very good to carry those with you. You'll also see on the table here, a couple of quarters. Why on earth would you want quarters? How often do you go on a job and you don't have quarters with you? I keep these in the bottom of my toolbox. Let me throw them in there. Because I never know when I'm gonna to need to do a parking meter. I mean, you do not want to get a $78 ticket for parking in Los Angeles or somewhere, which is ridiculous. Let's go here next. This here is a little drill. It's an electric drill. This charge on this particular drill will go for six or eight months before I charge it again. I like this particular model. It's just the little Ryobi. Now there's one that has a battery in it. I got that too. I don't like it as much. But this one here comes with a ratchet system. And you can see that it's on drill right now. And I can lower the ratchets because when I'm dealing with these machines, what I'm doing is I'm drilling into plastic. If I'm drilling, this is a screw from the uh, plastic bezel inside. This is, this is a screw that holds the screen on. I can make go backwards or forwards on it, just with a push of a button, you know, right here. Backwards or forwards. And so if I'm tightening it up and I've got it too high, it'll rip through that plastic so fast. Now you're gonna have to glue it in and that's, you don't wanna do that. So I can go all the way down to very little. You can hear the ratchet. And I can go up. I usually keep it on three or number four and I don't just spin it fast, it just spins very slowly. It's very good to, to dismantle the machines and put them back together without stripping the threads. So I like this little tool. And again, six to eight months before I have to uh, charge it again. I like that a lot. All right, next on the table. Something you really should carry. Now the new machines all come with electronic locks. But remember, you're a technician now. You're going to see a lot of older machines, and they have manual locks. I'm talking about the combination. 
So if you're dealing with an older machine, you need to have these two wrenches, which are special key, special Allen key wrenches, whatever you guys call them. And you can see the design of them here. This one here, it actually allows you to change a combination lock, which is very, very simple. And this is, this is the very old one for the Triton 9600s, for example. And they changed the lock some years later to use this key. And you see it's got a little notch cut out here. And it looks just like a regular Allen wrench. It's only turned so you can turn it in the lock. And we'll do a video on that later. But just remember, these two keys here can be very valuable. Because maybe you find an old machine which uh, is open. Well, I can show you how to dismantle that lock, put this key in, and change the combination back again. So these are very important. And I always keep two or three of each of those in my car. So I'll throw those in my box now. I don't want to lose those. And these screws, I'll throw those in the bottom of the box because I don't want to lose them. Let me put my marker pen away. And my flashlight in the toolbox too because I don't need to lose that. Now, this is quite important. Now, you don't need this particular thing right now, but if you have one, you might want to carry it. And perhaps you're going into a store, you're fixing a machine up and you want to look good. Maybe they've got their wiring all over the place. Well, you're just going to be able to staple the wires against the wall or wherever you want to put them. So it can just kind of make you look more professional to have this little staple gun and you can clean up the wiring for them. And again, that's where this would come into these zip ties to clean up the wiring. So that's something I just keep in the car. Okay, so we're now we're going to get to some of the more basic tools you have to have. And let's go through those now. First off, screwdrivers are going to be the most common item you're going to use. So the three major main screwdrivers you're going to use are the three Phillips. The regular Phillips, the short Phillips, and the very long, super skinny Phillips. The most common is going to be this screwdriver here, just the regular Phillips. This is going to take care of nearly all the uh, screws in it. Again, I do prefer to use this one here with a magnetic tip, but short of having that, you're going to need this particular Phillips here. So if you can't afford this right here right now, just wait on it. And make sure you carry these as backup as well, because if your drill dies, you want to be able to use it. But let's show you what this long one here does first. Let's assume you have a printer problem. Now this is just an old printer I pulled out for just for style right now. Now let's say that this printer it wouldn't fall that you couldn't make this thing fall down like here. You couldn't make this fall down. Let's say you got a pa paper jam. Well, when you take the printer out, you have to be able to release this button, push it down. Well, sometimes the blades have not set properly. And so you can't do that. So what you're going to need to do is manually adjust the blades. You see this right here, this little uh, mark right here? This screwdriver, I don't know if you can see that or not, you probably can't, but you'll get the idea. Inside of here, it goes inside of the printer head. And if you can see right here, it goes inside of here and you can, there's a screw in there and you can literally turn that and manually turn this, you can manually t pull the blade up. You can then push this down. So you, this is going to be a very important tool. You're not going to need it very often, but if you ever get a paper jam that's so bad and you can't do that, you need to be able to adjust the blades. And so that's just what that's for. So that's another video, guys. Let me put these keys away. Okay, let me put the Phillips screwdrivers away. You don't need those anymore. I'll put my drill away. Next, you never know when you're going to need the regular straight head screwdrivers. I always carry different lengths, but the most common of the straight head screwdrivers you're going to use is this one here, the tiniest one, the small flat head screwdriver. I do carry these just in case I need them. I rarely use these ones. I'm usually a Phillips, but you never know what kind of machine you're going to come across. Okay, so something else that's good to have is these here. These little pick tools right here, you see one's just a straight head. They're good for, let's for example again on the printer. Let's say I've got a printer jam. I've pulled down, I pushed the button down, I pulled this open, I've turned it upside down. I might want to use these just to be able to pull some paper out very gently. Maybe there's a piece of paper stuck in here, I can get it in there. Maybe there's something I can just poke around. Keep those available in your toolbox. Again, you're not going to need them very often, so you probably won't need them. Not essential, but good to have. 
So there's another, there's another, I usually keep at least two of these straight head screwdrivers, by the way, two of each tool, because sometimes you'll lose them or mislay them. Oh, let's show you these. Very occasionally, I will need a screwdriver like this, like a half swastika type looking thing. This is just a straight head version. I also have the Phillips head and they have two sizes on each end. Occasionally you have to get in there where you cannot get to the screw, it's too tight. So even the short head screwdriver is too short, so this is very very good to have around. I rarely ever use it, but you never know. And again, this is another version right here. This is just a ratchet one. It, it goes backwards and forwards. It has a little ratchet, ratchet on it right here. I don't know where I got that from. I picked it up somewhere along the way. But again, it's very good to get in there and try to just pull it around. Just use it two different sizes. Throw these zip ties in my box before I lose them. Again, they just sit in my box, just loose. All right, next, let's go through the pliers. I've got two different size needle nose pliers. These are good for paper jams or just if you've dropped something in somewhere, you can put it in there and get it out. If you don't have a magnet on a stick, then these are just as good. But sometimes you'll just need to reach down or maybe clip a wire off, whatever it is you need to do. So two different size needle nose pliers is, is a pretty good idea. Again, that's not the tool you're gonna to use very often, but remember you're a tech now, so you may as well be prepared. Regular pliers, you never know when you're gonna need those. These need some oil on them. I haven't used them in quite a while. You never know when you wanna grip something or try and use them. So again, not gonna use them very often. Maybe some wire cutters, you never know. These, however, these are cutters. These are little wire cutters. Um, I highly recommend you get a couple of pairs of these because you're always looking to cut off maybe a zip tie, maybe cut a wire, uh, maybe cut the bands on a new machine. Whatever it is, these come in very handy. You'll use these a lot. So make sure you get a pair of good little clippers. By the way, this is my cheap pair. I have a nice, nice quality pair as well. Okay, this here, this here is just a little wrench and it is, I don't know what size it is. I'm gonna show you what this does in a moment. In fact, I'll put this clip in now. All right, let's go on inside here, guys. What I wanna show you is this. You see these bolts here? Well, you cannot use this wrench here to undo these bolts, or at least not very easily. So that's where this little tool right here comes in. Just a small little wrench, part of your wrench set. And you'll be able to get this in here and be able to take them off. And that allows you a lot more flexibility. Maybe this here, this is the uh, catch cover for the money. Maybe someone tried to break into and you have to replace it. And so this is very handy. And then again, if you're trying to get into places like this, where the screws are, you cannot get a long screwdriver in there. So you need the short one or the L-shaped one. So there's again, why you need these tools. And if you need it, you need it. So you might, may want to keep it around. It's usually part of just a cheap socket set. Next, let's talk about wrenches. It's always good to carry two different size wrenches. You never know if you're gonna need this. Maybe the bolt on the inside of the machine that you're trying to take out from a de to take out a machine, take the bolts out, is rusted, and you might need two sizes. So keep those handy, keep those available. These are just two cheap ones, I don't use them very often. They're just for backup. Okay, let's talk about these tools here. Like I said, these are just a backup. But this is what I prefer to use if the bolts are not rusted and I can get this on. I have two sizes here. Very often when people install ATMs, they overkill and I have to use this wrench to get it off. No machine needs a 5 8 or whatever size huge bolt to put in it, to put it to the floor. They'll use a 6 inch bolt and it's huge, it's half inch in diameter. And so I'll have to use this to get it off. And I'll use the long one because I've got to go over the bolt. So for example, I've got a bolt here. Let's say this bolt was in the machine and it's all the way in and you've got this much sticking up. A regular socket wouldn't be able to help you. So that's where you'd have to come up with your other wrench. However, if I've got the long socket, the long socket will go all the way in and I can take it out. See that? And that's gonna save me a lot of time and problems instead of trying to use a hand wrench. Because sometimes these will be rusted and you have to turn them a lot. So you don't wanna be able to do it by normal hands. This is a 9 16 and this is a 3 8 three and a half inch, 3 8 redhead. These are what I use to bolt ATMs down. I do not use anything bigger, I don't use anything longer. If you use a much longer bolt than this, this is even too long. I usually like about a three inch bolt. Okay, let me show you what I've got here. 
So this is the bolt here that I use. It's a 3 8 3 and 3 quarter inch. I should have got the 3 inch, but they weren't available that day. Let me tell you why I use these. First off, this bolt is way too long because the average concrete you're standing on in your garage or any foundation in a store is going to be a 2 inch slab. So if you're using a 6 inch bolt, this piece here, by the time it goes into the ground, you get all the way down, you're going to pull it all the way back up and it's going to be stuck in the ground like this much. So you don't need a massive bolt. However, I do like to do is when I'm putting these bolts in the ground and I'm putting these, these washers on them, I kind of think this washer here is too small. So I like to take a second washer, put it through, and so now it's reinforcing the bottom of the machine and it's, going, it's giving it more to push onto because the hole in the bottom machine, I think that's too small. Now, if someone wants to steal your machine, if you're paranoid about someone stealing your machine, there's no bolt in the world going to stop them. This is mostly to earthquake proof it and to stop them moving around and it's a deterrent. So don't go into worrying about getting massive bolts and half inch heads and so on. It's just ridiculous. So a three inch, three eighth bolt red head like this is all you need to do your installations, four of them. I happened to buy some packets the other day just because I ran out of my, I usually buy them 50 at a time. And when I buy them 50 at a time, I get them a lot cheaper because these will be two or three bucks for one, maybe two bucks for one. I can buy a whole box of 50 for 20 some dollars. And so that's a lot, lot cheaper. I only use the 3 8 but if I'm taking someone else's machine out, I have to use this one. You don't need a big, heavy hammer. This is just a regular hammer. You know, it's got a claw just in case I need to be able to pull something up. But this is a good, solid hammer. Don't use a cheap wooden one, because if it breaks on you, you'll be out of luck. So keep a good hammer around. Keep it in your box. Okay, let's talk about our drills. My Bosch drill here is where I keep most of my installation tools in one place. Again, I write my name on the box, my company name. I also put my name and number on the inside of my box. In this box, I keep several drills. I don't ever plan on just keeping one drill. The drill size, the bit, is a 3 8 bit right here. And now these drills, by the way, for the Bosch last for years. I always keep at least three of them on hand. Recently, I just discovered a really new drill, a new bit, a little more expensive, but you can see on the top here, it's got four prongs. These go through concrete like butter. It just, you don't need to put any pressure on it, just drop it, just drop straight through the concrete. I also keep in here different sizes. I keep the half inch and also the 5 8 drill bit um, just in case someone does want that bigger drill bit. I prefer not to use them, but I keep them just in case. And then I always carry spare bolts. I never know when I'm going to need to move a machine, change a machine around, and what I'm going to do with it. All right, so now the drill here, I also write my name on the drill, by the way. Nigel Dix, 381-7109, 71 for air code. This here is my Bosch Bulldog. I do not use the biggest drill because I bought the biggest one to begin with, which was much bigger than this. My goodness, it was overkill. So I like this Bosch Bulldog. It's a mid-range drill right here. Now this one here, I don't think they sell this model, but there's one similar. It's the Bulldog 11234 VSR. I looked for this one the other day. They no longer carry this model, but there's one just like it and very similar in size. Cost-wise, about 125 bucks. Much cheaper than you trying to pay someone 350 bucks to go install your machine. And so I do like this. It's a great drill. When I'm putting a machine in, I just hold it and it drops straight through the floor. The drill bits, let me show you how they work. On this particular drill bit here, there's no screwing it in. It simply pops in like that. And when you want to pull it out, just pull this back, pops out and pops in. I need to grease this one up a little more. There you go. This is a beautiful drill, so just to show you that real quick. Again, I keep my wrench in here. I keep my spare um, drill bits. I keep my spare bolts. I keep my wrenches in here. And I keep my hammer in here because I don't want to keep in my regular toolbox. It's too heavy. I don't use these tools except for insulation. So that stays in there. And so that's pretty much what I keep in my toolbox here. And I've had this drill for many years and I've had never any problems with it. Just keep it oiled up. You buy a Bosch, you won't need to buy a second one very anytime soon. Let's put that out of the way. All right, something which comes in very, very handy. This little vacuum, I love this little vacuum. It's easy to use, easy to clean. 
makes things much, much simpler when you're cleaning up after you've been drilling around, or maybe you just want to clean up around the machine. So it's just a nice little size. I think there's one actually a bit smaller than this, same shape and size as a wet and dry vac. And it also blows and it sucks as well. So you can use it as a blower as well. One thing I didn't show you earlier, something through this little tool here, if you're trying to fix one of these mechanisms, which is a cash box mechanism, for example, you might have to take off these little half moon rings. And so these are great for just being able to pull a, pull it off. And so they just get in there nicely, just to show you that, because some of these rings can be very tiny, like this one. There's a tiny one right there. And so they're great for pulling things off and so on. So they just come in real handy. One thing I recommend you keep, or two things. One is a spare power cord. Let's say you're locked out of the bottom of your ATM, or you found an ATM and you don't know if it's working. Well, you'll want to be able to plug your machine in, but you can't get in the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to take this cord, put it into the power and run it out the back, and you'll be able to test that machine right away because maybe someone cut their cord off and you have to replace it. So that's very, very essential to carry one of these cords. And you can take these off of a regular printer or any other equipment. They're just a basic cord and plug-in. So, you know, grab one of those. Also, I carry is a 100 foot, a 50 foot and a 25 foot ethernet cord. This is just in case, let's say their router's a long way away and I need to test it. Well, I never know, or maybe I'm on a new site and they, their router's too far away, well, I'll have to run a cord. Uh, maybe I don't want to pay for the monthly on the uh, router and I want to plug into their internet. Well, I'll need different size cords and they're always good to keep around. And occasionally those cords go bad. And maybe you need a new one for yours. So you need a 10, 20 foot cord for yours as well. So that is pretty much everything in one little box. Keeps it pretty clean, pretty simple. And you know, a box like this makes you look like you're a tech as well. So they know who you are when you come in. All right, let's go ahead and open this machine up. So this is what I was saying about the power cord. If you needed to use this power cord here because you couldn't get in the vault, then you're gonna need to plug your power right here, look. You see that right there? And you can just bypass it. That's the power supply. So that's just nice to know. All right, let's get out of the top. And just as a bonus, if you wanna know how to change these locks, let's say you've just picked up a machine. I'm gonna show you that while I'm here. First off, go ahead and open your machine. Do not do this with it locked. Because if you mess it up, you cannot get back in. I'm gonna show you real quick, before we end, how to change this combination. Right now it's on factory default of one, two, three, four, five, six. That's factory. So let's go ahead and push zero six times. You hear it go beep, beep. That means you did correct. Put the old combination in first. Beep, beep. You hear that? Now go ahead and pick a new combination. Let's do one, two, three, one, two, three. Beep, beep. Second, do it again to confirm the combination. Beep, beep. Now it's set. Now you gotta do it a third time to open it. And you hear a beep and you hear the door click. If I was to do that wrong, if I was doing it, let's say one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I did one, two, one, two, three, you hear it, deet, 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 that means I did it wrong. And it would set back to the original combination. If I do it wrong after I've set it three times or four times, it will give me a five minute timeout. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back again. Okay, I just make sure it's correct. Okay, zero six times again. Push them slowly. Okay, put the old, old combination in first. Put the new one in. I'm going to put the factory back in it because I'm transporting it. I won't set that until I get there. And then one more time to open it. And you hear a beep beep. That's easy as that, guys. Very, very simple. But make sure you do this with the door all open and locked so I cannot close it promise you, if you do this with the door closed, and you can, 
But if you do it with the door closed and you lock it, you are crap out of luck because now you're going to have to drill the machine open. Don't want to do that. All right, guys, that's my time here. I appreciate it. And let's join me in the next video. Please like and share this video. If you have any questions, you can call me. That is my cell phone number. I will put my cell phone number throughout the video as well because I know some of you watch the part you need and don't go any further. So, all right, guys, thank you very much.